Perhaps I'm finally safe from those skeletons here at this old church ruin. Oh dear, I fear I've spoken too soon yet again. Join me today as I show you how I built this set of modular church ruins that can be used with all my graveyard terrain and my skull mountain to make a really cool looking game board for Kill Team. I started out with a bunch of foam bricks. These bricks are two centimeters by one centimeter and I've just scrunched them with my hand and squashed them a lot to give them some rounder textures. I then get a broken up brick and chuck it a bunch of pieces in there. These bricks are really rough and rugged, a lot of edges. Um, and I'll mix this brick mixture with the rocks to give it even more of a pronounced texture. For painting up all the bricks, I mix some white gesso with some black paint and just water it down quite a bit. And this, I just chuck in all the bricks, mix it up, and they're all already painted. This technique is really good for quickly painting all of your bricks. Of course, it is extremely messy though. You definitely want to water down paint, so that way it's not sticking and glooping up. Also, I go through and add some other colors, but as you'll see later on, the other colors don't really make too much of a difference to the final product. When you're done, just lay it all out on a tray of baking paper to dry. To go along with the bricks, I also make some columns. I use this paper straw, cover it in some tacky glue, and then stick on a bunch of barbecue skewers all around it. I was going through with some hot glue, but the hot glue set before I was able to put all the skewers on. So I just went with some tacky glue and that works perfectly fine. I found just rolling it on the table did good to make it a nice uniform shape. I paint the pillars grey with a spray primer and then I just start sticking everything down to this piece of chipboard. Now because we're using chipboard we don't want to use too much PVA glue, washes, water and stuff like that so I'm sticking with hot glue for a majority of this piece. The only issue with hot glue is sometimes you get those strands hanging around. So what I do once I've built everything up is just hit it with a heat gun or a hairdryer and it will melt away all of those strands really easily. As you can see there, I had some 3D printed windows and I want there to be a bit of a elevation here so you can walk up to the window. So I just roughly cut out some one ply cardboard and stick it together to look like a set of stairs. This is really rough, just kind of going by eye. I then go ahead and stick everything else on, just slowly building up layers of these bricks. With this main piece at the back, I do two layers of bricks, but with all the other sets that I do, I realize I'm running out of bricks, so I only end up doing one layer. And this works really well for this main piece because it's got much larger windows on it. With the smaller pieces, they have smaller windows, so that's fine with just one layer. And I'm going through and with these bricks, I'm making it look very haphazard and sporadic. Like this is a set of ruins for a reason. It wasn't that well built in the first place. When it comes to the windows, I cut half bricks and just lay it along the bottom of this 3D file that I've got. This 3D file, I'll link it down in the description below. It's just a thingiverse file. And in some areas, I just come through with the window and I break it up with a pair of pliers and that gives it a nice look of a ruin. I then fill any of the exposed corrugation with some wall filler. On one of the pieces, I want to have a bit of a wooden landing up in there. So what I do is I grab my hot glue gun and I run it through the pieces of foam to make a bit of a channel and then I fill it with hot glue. So it's kind of melted a channel away in there. And then I just stick in a bunch of coffee stir sticks that I've cut to roughly two inches long. 
and then I just secure it in with another piece down the bottom. I was going to do roofs, but I was thinking in terms of gameplay, it might just obstruct the view from the top of the table too much, and it might not be that necessary. So I stuck with just walls. And here I'm making sure to cut it in such a way that they all line up and can be placed together as a full set or separate. And then I give all of the exposed chipboard a coat of PVA glue. This is a really light like stippling of PVA glue because I don't want it to start warping too much. And I sprinkle on my ground cover mix, which is baking soda, tea leaves, sand, anything in between. I then give all the window frames a nice coat in a bronze. I use miniature paints here just because they tend to go on a little bit better than the acrylic that I was working with before. And for the wooden pieces, I just give it a bit of a coat in a dark brown wash. And that maintains some of the texture, although again you'll see later on, it kind of all goes out the window with some of these steps that I do. I then cover all of the brickwork in a plaster of Paris mix, trying to really get it into the cracks and grooves in between each brick. For anything covering the bricks, I come through with a wet brush and just brush it off. Or at least I try my best. And then I also dab it away with a bit of a paper towel as well. Before we get to that bit though, we need to make the floors. And for the floors, I have these cork tiles that are adhesive on the back. I think they're meant for making coasters. I start off by giving them a base coat of black and then I'm just going to start painting a bunch of a light green, dark green and turquoise all over the place because this is going to turn into a marble floor. Once all of those green textures are dry, I give it a coat of a clear gloss. This warps it a bit so I stick it between a couple of books once it's dry and they flatten out really nice. I then dry out some baby wipes and proceed with the marble texture that you've probably seen on YouTube before. But if you haven't, I'll explain it here. You just grab the dried out baby wipe and just pull it and stretch it. And it will become a stencil that we can use to give the marble the white over the top. And once you are happy with it, you can just secure it around to the back with some masking tape. And we have a nice looking stencil that we can then spray over with some spray can. Now I give this two coats and I let it dry for a real long time. And then when you pull it off, you have a nice marbly texture. You can see some of the corners are not completely like fully 100% dry. So it's a bit difficult to pull them up. But eventually you work through it, you get it out and you have a really nice looking texture. I then just cut these into one inch strips and then one inch tiles. We don't need to worry too much about the exposed cork corrugation around the side because that is going to turn into our texture later on. And then I just take that and stick it on to any parts that would have the flooring still visible. So this is the stairs here at the back. And I just place them using the sticky adhesive on the back. Some of it comes off and doesn't stick too well. So I just go in with some hot glue and some PVA glue, depending on what I have on hand, and just secure it in properly. And this gives a really nice marble floor texture. And even when it's ruined as well. To give the ruined look, I grab my knife and just kind of chip away at all of the exposed edges. Now that's giving us that brown corky color, but once we go over with an oil wash, it'll actually soak in and color it black. 
and this is just a very diluted black and brown mix of a real cheap oil paint and it comes out looking really well but it does make all of those purple bricks that i originally had on there kind of fade into gray again I then go around and do any touch-ups on pieces of exposed foam, painting them grey, and any pieces that I feel got cluttered up too much by the wash or the plaster, I go over with some more bronze just to fill those out. I then cover it all in some PVA glue and hit it with some black tea, some green tea, and some chamomile tea to cover it in some flock. And then I also mix together a mix of 50-50 PVA glue and green flock and stipple on some moss growing all over the place. And that is going to round it out and make it look real complete, really nice old ruins. And once all of those are dry, I think I have a really nice looking set of modular church ruins. I even went through and added some other pieces to the mix, like some fallen columns and some walls and even a doorway as well. Anyway, thanks for watching and I will see you next week, perhaps with something better to put these on than a black sheet.